So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Chimbo. Uh, I'm a senior data scientist in uh, LinkedIn's analytics data mining team. So I know it's been a long day, so I'm glad you guys made it. And uh, uh, today, uh, for this session, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, how we leverage uh, graph, GraphX to conduct uh, multi-label graph analysis and uh, commutations. So uh, this is an overview of this talk. First, I will introduce the background, motivation, as well as the goal of our uh, project. And then I will introduce our design of the data structure of the multi-label graph and how we construct a multi-label graphs. And then I will use a classic graph-based algorithm, PageRank, to show you the guys like the code, how to implement uh, um, graph-based algorithm on the multi-label graphs. And uh, then I will introduce uh, some preliminary experience we have conducted in LinkedIn's data. And at last, I will provide a conclusion for this talk. So uh, first thing, graphs is actually very common in our real life. And uh, usually, we need to do this graph analysis, also the network analysis. Uh, in many different applications. For example, in telecommunication network, we can view each mobile device or uh, your laptop as a, a node and the connections among them as, as links. And in other situations like bioinformatics, we can view a neuron or maybe a chemical compound as different nodes and the interactions among them as links to connect to them. And in other scenarios like LinkedIn, uh, social network, you will have members as the nodes and different activities uh, that happens among the nodes, among the users to connect to them. So when we do the network analysis, we are actually interested in at least two different things. First one will be how can we extract the features that we are interested in related to the uh, network to represent the nodes. For example, uh, we may be interested in the in or out degrees of the nodes, or maybe we are interested in how many uh, triangles the node uh, belongs to, because the triangle is a very special structure. It has a, like a social meaning in social networks. And in the uh, second situation, we sometimes we need to develop like a graph-based algorithm, like PageRank I just introduced, as well as like a label propagation or heats algorithm. So uh, in all different types of networks, there are two like, very general ones. First one is what we call the homogeneous network. So this network is a very simple like, abstraction of our real life uh, networks. So basically, it contains uh, only a single type of nodes, and, uh, only, and all the edges belong to the same type. So I'll give you one example. When we consider the citation networks, authors will be the only node type in the network, and the citation relationship will be the only relationship that connect the two authors. Uh, however, this kind of data structure is not very uh, powerful to depict uh, like a real life complicated networks. And uh, so if you go, uh, go to GraphX, you create a graph, so most likely you will get a homogeneous network. The other type of network is what we call a heterogeneous network. So this network basically contains nodes of multiple types, as well as edges of multiple types. So one example will be a social network user activity graph. For nodes, you only have user. But for the edges, which are the relationship between the users, you can have multiple ones, like the reply action or the comment action happens be, uh, between them. And another uh, more complicated scenario will be uh, LinkedIn economic graph, which uh, LinkedIn tries to map different entities in the economy, uh, economy in just one single graph. So you will get like nodes like members, companies, jobs, all this kind of thing, as well as different types of edges like employment and the friendship, connection among users, something like that. So, but this kind of uh, data structure for, uh, for the heterogeneous network actually better resembles our real life networks. So uh, 
when we develop, like uh, when we represent heterogeneous network, how can we do that? One simple way is just to, to attach labels on the nodes to mark the difference of the nodes, as well as the labels on the edges to mark the difference between them. So this leads to the things we want to discuss today, which is multi-label graphs. And uh, uh, unfortunately, um, this one is not uh, currently directly supported by GraphX. So um, then let's take a look at the one real-life use case for heterogeneous network or multi-label graph. So uh, I think in the last year of winter, we are doing a project related to uh, conduct analysis on social activity graph in LinkedIn. And in that one, we are particularly interested in the member as well as the member uh, he or she works for. So in that case, you can consider the company as a label attached with the uh, nodes. And for the edges, we have three different types of social activities in LinkedIn, which is like, share, and comment. So each of them actually means a, a, a very different type of uh, edges. So um, for a graph like this, we have a very interesting question like, uh, how many times a member likes or comments other people's posts? And we are also interested in like, the question like, who has the highest page rank score in one company with respect to a single behavior? So the first question actually leads to the problem how to extract the network features with respect to labels. While the second question actually related to um, how to design graph-based algorithm on the label level, on the multi-label graph. So if we want to use Spark and GraphX to s solve this problem, um, you cannot find like, a direct support for this. So what you can do is basically create multiple subgraphs from the original graph and conduct the analysis on each of them. But this will introduce a lot of duplication because one node can belong to different subgraphs. So you're kind of repeating the word. And uh, what we are trying to do is to find a unified solution to do this on the original multi-label graph. So uh, what we did is uh, we're trying to find solutions based on GraphX to provide a multi-label graph analysis. And uh, for the project, the short-term goals, which we have already achieved, is basically how to design the multi-label graphs and how to construct one. And uh, we also uh, implement an efficient compu computation of page rank scores with respect uh, to all labels for every node. And uh, uh, the long-term goals of this one will be to provide an API library that allows us uh, to do additional operations on the graph. For example, how can we construct a new multi-label graph through transformation from an older graph? As well, how can we summarize different network features? And we, also, uh, we are also interested in providing implementations for additional common graph-based algorithms like uh, label propagation. So um, first, I want to introduce how we design the multi-label graph data structure. So it contains two parts. First one is the node, and the second one will be the edges. So the node will be represented as a top of three fields. The first one will be the ID, which is a unique identifier associated with the node. And the second one will be some labels. A set of labels contains uh, the node labels. The third field will be an optional one, will be containing some additional like, node-dependent features in this structure. And the edges can be uh, represented with a top of four fields. So the f first two fields actually mark the ID of the source of this edge and the target of the edge. And for the third one will be a label associated with the edge to mark the difference of different types of edges. And the fourth field will be similar to the node features. We will have a optional uh, additional features for uh, additional edge features for each edge. So the next thing I want to have a brief discussion is about uh, the comparison between node labels and edge labels. So in practice, actually, we found uh, edge label is sometimes more important in many uh, network features, such as page rank score and in or out degrees. And node labels are sometimes used to filter out nodes when we're trying to select some subset, uh, a subset of nodes that we are interested in. 
Um, so why is that? It, it because the edge labels are usually used to form uh, meaningful subgraphs. For example, if uh, for the page rank score, page rank score is basically a random walk uh, algorithm. So it follows the edge to walk it. So it's very important. Okay, when we are defining a page rank score, which type of edges you are interested in. So uh, and for the degrees, in natural, when you calculate the degree you need to like, differentiate what types of edges, how many different types of edges you have for each node. While the, in other situations, node labels can be easily absorbed in edges if necessary. For example, in our previous um, situation, we're interested in the top influencers for each company. So in this case, actually the company will be the node labels attached with each node. And the edge labels mark the different types of actions among different, uh, different users. So what you do is just calculate the features as well as the page rank score based on the current graph. And uh, then filter out based on the node labels to find the top users for the companies that you are interested in. But in the second situation, sometimes we are interested in top influencers within each company. So in that case, the company label actually becomes a part of the edge labels. So you kind of absorb it. As long as the two nodes are in the same company, then you kind of need to add this uh, label from the company node to the edge labels. Uh, so what this means actually is a kind of unique graph transformation operation that only happens in multi-label graphs. And uh, once we have the structure of the multi-label graphs, uh, let's take a look at how can we uh, create a multi-label graph. So what we have done is provided like a three different types of method. First one is uh, you create an RDDs of the nodes and the RDDs of the edges, and then you just uh, create a graph based on it. And another thing will be uh, you just provide the RDDs of all the edges. So in this case, we just assume that there will be no node labels. So we only use the edge labels. And uh, the third way will be load uh, um, the graph directly from a file. So you can provide a list of edges like this, which is the source ID, the target ID uh, of the edge, as well as the label associated with the edge. And then, uh, optionally, you can also provide a list of nodes with the uh, node labels. If you do not provide it, we'll just consider the node labels are missing. So. Um, what we want to do in the future is basically to create more ways to transform, just like I said, like absorb the node labels, to provide more ways to transform from one multi-label graphs to create new ones. So um, after I have introduced how we design the multi-label graphs and how can we construct it, I will provide some uh, one example, and you know, as well as the code, how to like uh, implement a page rank algorithm on the scenario of multi-label graphs. So page rank algorithm is actually a very classic one. It was developed by Larry Page and Sergey like in 1997 or 1998. So uh, it was previously used to, to rank the importance of web pages. So the algorithm has a very, uh, in, a very interesting intuition, which is important pages are always linked by other important pages. So this intuition actually naturally leads to an iterative updating process of the important score until the score converges. And the final obtained important score are called the page rank scores in this case. So whenever uh, the, a page has a higher page rank score, it will be considered as more important. So uh, mathematically, kind of uh, mathematically here, uh, so how can you calculate the page rank score? So just uh, kind of ignore all the math. What we're trying to do is like for each edge, you need to define a weight for the edge. So usually what we will do is to define the weight as the one over the out degree of the source node of each edge. That basically means for each edge, it has the same probability to walk out to other different nodes. And then you start with the initial score, either one or one over the total number of nodes if you prefer the score to be normalized. And then starting from the initial score, you use the equation here to update the page rank score. 
So what the equation does is basically, in every iteration, the, each node will send a message to its neighbors. And then message will actually be its current page rank score, timed by the weight of the edge. And after the, all the message has been sent out, for each other message, they just sum up all the message they have received. And the summation will be the new page rank score of the current uh, node. So, uh, but this algorithm actually, if you write like this, it does not guarantee it to converge, have a converge, uh, have a saturated score for any type of graph. So what we usually do in practice is actually we allow a small probability, allow each node to be teleported to any other nodes. So the, um, the probability sometimes is also called like a reset probability or teleportation probability, something like that. So, um, so here is like one example. You have a node A, it has like two neighbors. So we define the weight as 0.5 for each of them. And in every iteration, B will receive the current score of A times the weight, which is 0.5 here. Then B will sum up all the message to update its current, or, uh, its current own page rank score. So how can we implement this in practice? Usually it has two ways. First one is through a power iteration through matrix manipulation. So we consider the scores as a vector. And then all the weights can be represented as a transitional matrix. And then every time each iteration just times the vector by the matrix. But uh, here's a trick here. If the matrix is very sparse, you need to consider maybe you are wasting a little bit of resource, or you need to choose like a sparse implementation for the matrix. Another way will be just uh, like what I said previously, from the perspective of, of each node, how can we send the message? How can we uh, combine the message? And how can we update the current message? So this actually is more easier for a parallel implementation, and it leads to a general uh, programming interface called a Prago. So Prago is proposed by Google, and uh, it's also supported by GraphX right now. So what you need to do with Prago is uh, to implement an algorithm, you just uh, write like three functions. First function tells the program how to send the message for each node. And the second one will be how to combine received messages. And the third one will be, OK, once I combine all the messages, how can I, up, how can I use it to update the information of my current uh, state? So. Um, Basically, what we do is follow the Prago schema to implement the algorithm. So first, you will have a, like a graph to compute, to store the page rank score, and to facilitate the computation process of the page rank. So what you will have is have a, a new graph from the multi-label graph. And uh, the node type in this graph will be a map from an integer to two different doubles. So the integer will be the label. The label is associated with uh, the page rank score. And the two doubles, the first one will be the current iteration, the value of the current iteration page rank score. And the second one will be the score difference between the current iteration and the last iteration. And for this, uh, secondly, you also need to define the edge type in this graph. So what we will have is a, a tuple of integer and a double. And the integer will be the label, which is the same label you will have as the ed, uh, ed, edge label in the multi-label graph. And the double will be the weight for the transitional probability on the edge. And then you also need to define the page rank uh, message type, which is what will be the type you used to, to pass the message. So we define it like this, which is the map, map from the label to the uh, message, which is a double value to score used to, to pa pass the message. So you probably may wonder, since each edge only have one label, according to our definition, why don't we just uh, define it as a tuple, but a ra rather than like a map in this case? So um, the answer for this one is actually when you write the Prago, the uh, input for the message combiner and the output should have the same data structure. So in this case, uh, so I will introduce this like uh, in detail later. 
to show how, why we use like a map in this case. So let's take a look at some code. So this is how we implement the message sender in this case for multi-label graph. So what you can see is here is we first uh, okay see what the, if the score difference is still above the tolerance, which we consider is still not uh, saturated, then we will construct the, the message. What will be the message? The message will be a single map containing the label and, as well as the current score timed by the uh, times by the um, edge weight. And then in here, you can see, OK, then once we have the message for each node, how can we combine them? So what you can see here is for each map, if the two records have the same key, we just add them up, which, uh, which is from the equation we have introduced previously. Otherwise, we just fuse them because they belong to different uh, labels. And then once you have this uh, combined message, the next thing we need to consider is how can we use the message to update the current score, current page rank score. So what you can see here is uh, how we use the equation we introduced previously to update the page rank score and uh, calculate the new difference of the new score and the previous score. So once you have these three uh, different functions ready, then you, just, you can just call the Prego interface and the algorithm will start to run and until it converges. So uh, we did some experiments once we have implemented this on a sample of LinkedIn's social activity graph. So we have a sampled graph from all the social activities in the month of November of 2016. So it contains like around two million nodes. And uh, we use the, as we have introduced before, we use the companies that each node, uh, each member works for as the node labels. And then we use three types of social activities in the graph, which is like, share, and comment. And in this case, we reach like around 76 million edges in this graph. And then we set the um, Spark setting as well as the converges setting uh, for the page ranks go like this. And then we, um, the result shows like uh, in general, the algorithm can converge around like 100 iterations. And the total running time can be around like 30 to 40 minutes. And uh, once we have the score, we did an interesting case study for LinkedIn. So for LinkedIn, if we are interested in the like behavior, we can see our CEO, Jeff Weiner, is actually the champion in this case. And our uh, editor-in-chief, Daniel Roth, um, he's actually the second runner in this case. Um, but if we are looking at the share ac activity, although the CEO, Jeff Weiner, is still uh, the first place, but actually the ranking changes a little bit, as well as if you take a look at the comment activity. So this actually tells us um, for different types of edges, different types of activities, the ranking can be very different. So it actually represents the user's importance like from different perspectives. So this also means that like, it's kind of useful to introduce this multi-label graph to differentiate, okay, from what perspective you are saying about the, you're talking about the importance of the user. And it can be further used as a features to do other predictive remodeling. So then I want to share some uh, further discussion and uh, lessons we have learned. So one way to change the edge type is we combine all the edges have the same source ID and the target ID. Basically, we, from, for the label, we kind of combine it. So in this case, you can reduce the duplication of the edges and save space. But one potential problem for this is actually you need more process when you write the uh, Prego um, in program interface or other um, algorithm to calculate any network features. So this is kind of a classic, like a safe, uh, it's like a classic, like a space and uh, a time trade-off. And uh, another thing is that when we directly use standard Prego interface, once we have the three functions we have defined, we found a, um, about the problem, 
kind of uh, tricky part, is that although the data from the last iteration is um, persisted, actually the DAG of the RDDs will keep growing because it's an iterative algorithm. So eventually, in theory, you may cause out of memory error. So if you increase the memory, it just will run a more a few more iterations, but eventually it will run out of memory. So um, a way to avoid that is we can uh, have a, like a customized Prago interface with a local checkpoint or checkpoint to kind of cut off the DAG as well as a, um, to preserve the persistence of the data. And we're also interested in test, further test this on larger data set as well as uh, data from various data sources. So uh, here's a brief conclusion of the talk. Talk first, uh, I introduced uh, what are some uh, important like features and graph-based algorithm in the network analysis, and I also compared the um, homogeneous network as well as the heterogeneous networks in real life. And uh, uh, next, I introduced uh, how can we construct and how can we design multi-label graphs, and uh, I also used uh, uh, PageRank as an example to show you how to, like, coding uh, to implement a graph-based algorithm in a multi-label uh, graph scenario. And then, uh, at last, I showed the experience we have done in our own data. So here are some references of the talk, and thank you. Any question? Yeah. All right, thanks. This, this was a great talk. Um, First, I just want to mention that the uh, issue with the DAG uh, unbounded growth has been mm -hmm. fixed for Spark 2.2. I see. Nice. Um, Good to hear. <laughs> because also, we use that 2.1. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was really hard to get in. Yeah. Um, also, wanted to know uh, why you chose GraphX as opposed to some of the other large graph processing frameworks like Flink and um, Giraffe. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Can you repeat? Um, I'm sorry, I, I was wondering what led you to uh, use GraphX compared to Giraffe or the, the Flink graph um, engines. Actually, we haven't tried out like a Giraffe because when we start the GraphX, because the project originally started like calculating the page rank score, and then we found out the, uh, immediately we found out the, it supports like a Prago interface. It will ease a lot of problem for us. So I think that uh, Spark will be, it was kind of our first choice when we do this. And I think LinkedIn has a very good uh, infrastructure to support um, Spark comparing to Giraffe in this case, yeah. There's also a mic in the middle for questions. Hi, uh, yeah, I, I really like the talk as well. Um, I was just wondering, yeah. it seems like this multi-label graph scenario is, uh, lends itself very well to simultaneously considering all the different types of edges. Uh, I know you showed an example with each one individually, uh, but I was wondering if you did any experiments where you had some sort of uh, message passing rule that incorporated all of the different types of labels of the edges. So like, say, some linear combination of them or something like that. So, um, um, so the code I just showed is when they uh, pass the message, actually it do the, uh, it kind of calculate the page rank score with all labels at the same time. It's kind of simultaneously. But we haven't tried like a combination, like uh, combine two different edges, uh, edge labels to get a kind of a new one, different kind of combination that we haven't tried, yeah. Interesting, yeah, thank you. Sure. I was wondering if this is published in open source or, or whatnot. Right now, I haven't. I think, yeah, it's kind of, uh, we're still trying to implement it. And okay. uh, for, because right now, we uh, already finished uh, the construction part and the data structure design, as well as the page rank. But we consider we have a lot more to do, like network features. So as you can see, because when we design the, uh, the weight, we actually already calculated the outer degrees of each node. So for this feature, already supported, but for the others, we're still like developing, yeah. 
Hi, um, I had a question. So, um, do you consider any value in including no op edges where, let's say, there's an impression made uh, between user PI and on a content from user PJ, mm -hmm. but no action is taken? versus just looking at uh, all the specific actions that are taken. For example, uh, if someone posts something at like midnight, it may get zero Im impressions in general, and what does have you know, less likelihood of getting shared and you know, social activity on it. Okay, I think in that case, it's more like, that's what uh, I said, it's more like the optional field for like the node features or the edge, uh, edge features. So when we design this, we already consider this, like how can we incorporate some additional features? So if we have that field, actually you can just apply like classic algorithm based on the features to um, kind of build a prediction model, like a traditional one in this case. So I think the optional field is for cases like this. Gotcha, thanks. Yeah. So actually, I have a question actually regarding to how, how long you think it takes to run this kind of graph and uh, what kind of frequency you update the graph. And then if, it's, for example, let's say a new user joined the network, for example, mm -hmm. how you update the graph itself? Um, for this one, I think because what we did is uh, we're starting from the collecting the data, which is the social activity. Mm -hmm. So basically every time you do is basically starting from the scratch, collect the data, construct the graph, and uh, calculate the page rank score. For that specific case, it takes like 30 to 40 minutes, which is acceptable. But if the graph is larger, then you probably need to consider some adapt adaptive algorithm to, uh, to do that. In other cases, if the graph is not very inactive, it's not like it changes frequently, I think the update frequency can be a bit like uh, less frequent comparing to those like highly changing graph structures, yeah. So when you say update, is it mainly update from the scratch, is it? Or is it like more like adaptive upgrading? Right now, what, what, what we have done is like from scratch. We first collect the data, know, okay, what are the edges, what are the nodes, then we construct the graph and then compute the uh, score. Once you have a new snapshot of the network, we need to start that again, yeah. Okay, so th then the infrastructure just now is mentioned like uh, 15 node cluster, is it? The, the underlying infrastructure you use to upgrade the graph. Uh, I'm the sorry, underlying what? infrastructure you try to run the model. How many nodes in the cluster? Uh, two million. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. two million. Okay, so I think we're out of time. Um, right. Let's give King Bo another round of applause. Thank you.